welcome. Can the public and private sectors work together to create a robust education system? Let's understand the Singapore model, particularly at the primary and the secondary level, to see how they've managed and created some very bright young minds. I'm joined by Dr. Tan Tai Yong, Vice Provost at the National University of Singapore. Uh, Dr. Tan, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. So tell us what's unique or different about the way Singapore approaches its education system. Uh, I, I know I'm, this is the National University of Singapore, right. but let's also, uh, if you can give us a sense at the primary level, right. and then I'm going to ask you about the secondary level. Okay. Um, I don't know whether it's unique, but what's special about the way Singapore approaches its education system is mm -hmm. that it's a, it's a very committed, long-term strategic approach mm -hmm. towards education. And this is driven essentially by necessity. Mm -hmm. Singapore is a small city state with totally no uh, sort of natural resources, mm. and therefore it's entirely dependent on human resource for its development. Mm. Now, in order for Singapore to grow and thrive, it mm. needs a very qualified, a very qualified workforce. Mm -hmm. And to have a good workforce, you need good education. So mm. from its early days mm. as an independent state, mm. Singapore government has invested mm. a lot of resources to developing education. It was a matter of survival, and as Singapore moved up the value chain, it was also a matter of staying ahead of the curve and bringing value mm. to the kind of global networks that Singapore has to be a part of. Right. So all along, the government has actually committed mm. resources consistently to making sure that the education that, si that it's provided for its citizens are of a very high quality. And therefore, at primary level, at secondary level, at university level, you find a commitment to excellence because we need to have people who are very well educated right. in the sciences, in maths, and in the languages as well. So can you give us a manifestation of that? So when you say committed to excellence, whether it's okay. the primary or okay. at the university level, what does it mean and what does it translate into? So what it means is that you will, ha you, you will need to have very good infrastructure. Mm. So schools are built and, mm. and basically Singapore now has a compulsory education system. Mm. So you must be able to provide enough places for all uh, children of school going age. And the schools must be of a good quality mm. because we are going to make sure that people have the best environment to learn in. Technology, for instance, mm. has to be kept up to date. And then teachers have to be found, and good quality teachers, uh, highly qualified teachers have to be found. So that means a very good teacher training system. Mm. So all this put together uh, requires a, a lot of commitment of resources and a lot of planning and coordination to make sure that high quality, in terms of the inputs that we give to the, the children in curriculum and all this, uh, are, are provided so that you can produce the kind of quality output that you will get at the end uh, in terms of uh, students who do well in their studies. Right. And, and what about the role of the private sector? To what extent do you see yeah. the role of private sector in a country like Singapore yeah. in education, yeah. uh, particularly at yeah. the postgraduate level? Uh, the role of the private sector, I would say, is more pronounced mm. at the tertiary level. Mm -hmm. At the primary and secondary school le level, I think you say K to 12, right? Mm. Uh, the, the states plays a fundamental role. Correct. So most of the education, in fact, almost all, mm. provided is are provided by the state. Mm. We have some private schools, but these are mainly for uh, children of expatriate communities. Mm. But Singaporean uh, sit, uh, students all attend schools that are run by our Ministry of Education. Now, at the tertiary level, now we then uh, go up to uh, the next uh, level of training where students need to be prepared for mm. the workforce. Now, here is where the role of the private sector becomes important because we need to have people with the requisite skills to enter the economy. And the economy is changing rapidly even as we speak. So it's important for us, for the government, to have this constant dialogue mm. with the industry to understand what the needs are, what the requirements are, so that the curriculum can evolve and change mm -hmm. and the kind of training that we provide can evolve and change. So give us an example of uh, what uh, is being, let's say, discussed from a, a curriculum point of view today? So for instance, you know, if you are looking at, say, I, I'll take a typical mm -hmm. polytechnic, which is a, a technical education sure. kind mm -hmm. of a, a tertiary institution, we will have to, uh, the government will have to understand mm -hmm. what is needed. So for instance, if maritime technology, aeronautics or infocom technology are things that are going to drive the, the Singapore economy, then obviously this have to be reflected in the curriculum, right. in the offerings of this polytechnic. It's no point for a polytechnic to offer something for which there is no demand mm. in the industry. So these dialogues continuously happen mm. uh, between the providers of the education and the people who are receiving the graduates at the end. Now, at the university as well, I mean, we talk a lot to uh, the, the industry, we engage the industry so that we can understand the kinds of skills, the kinds of requirements uh, that our, our graduates are going to require. And this is not an easy task, as you can imagine, because 
the workforce changes, the industry changes. So sometimes we say that we are even trying to prepare students for jobs that don't even exist yet. Mm -hmm. So this is a constant challenge. But you can't do this behind closed doors in a campus. You mm -hmm. need to go out and engage the industry. And mm -hmm. this is what I think most of the tertiary institutions right. in Singapore do. Right. So last question. Tell us about the National University of Singapore's plans. Are you looking at uh, expanding? Are you looking at uh, uh, going outside of Singapore? In, in well, in terms of uh, numbers, mm -hmm. I think we are probably at the uh, optimum size. You know, mm -hmm. We have 25,000 undergrad mm -hmm. undergraduate students and about 10,000 graduate students. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a population of 35,000 students. It's a pretty big university. Right. In terms, so it's in terms of size, we're almost there. Mm -hmm. The next phase of the development will have to be the quality of the education. So the quality will come in two parts. One, of course, is the kinds of research mm. that the university does. And, the, and through research, the, its ability to percolate downwards into the education so that our graduates have uh, exposure to cutting edge research. The second would be education. How do we give our students the best education and give them the kind of skills that not only uh, will position them well in particular industries, but more importantly, allow them to thrive in an industry that's constantly changing. I'll give you an example. Maybe 10, 15 years ago, most graduates were, uh, worked in one job for an mm. extended period of time, mm. maybe stay in one job throughout mm. their careers. But now, careers change, and students, or when they, when, when they join the workforce, they are not likely to work in the same job for mm. many years. Mm. So this ability to adapt, to be versatile, to change, to grow, to uh, essentially capitalize on these changes must be based on certain long-term skills and not short-term vocational qualities. And this is the challenge for the university now. How do we provide the students? What we call, how do we prepare future-ready graduates mm -hmm. that will have the requisite skills, not to just last in one job, mm -hmm. but to have what we call a lifetime of careers. So uh, one instance of what one of those inputs could be? Um, OK, for instance, um, communication skills. I'll give you an okay. example. A, a, a lot of Singaporean students are technically very sound mm -hmm. because of the very uh, high quality of education that we provide at uh, the primary and at the secondary level. So in terms of science and maths, our, our students do very well. But uh, we always tell them that the ideas are pointless unless they are able to communicate these ideas. Mm -hmm. And if, if you are a graduate, chances are that you will go into a managerial or leadership position. So the ability to think clearly, think critically, and then communicate your thoughts are skills that are going to place you well in whatever jobs you do. So this is an example of uh, going beyond the sort of technical content-based kind of learning that we do, but to create the kind of additional skills and wherewithal to place our graduates well. Right, Dr. Tan, thank you very much for uh, speaking to us and enlightening us. Thank you very much. Thank you.